Okay, my name is Bridget Mugasira Mugume Kweyara Atenyi. Very many people think I'm from the land of milk and honey, Kavar and Rusheny and Imbarara. But let me take the honor to announce that Bridget is Atenyi. Where do Atenyi people come from? Where? Oh, the cleanest city in Uganda. Hallelujah. It's a joy for me to be here to share with you, chaplaincy. Thank you so much for allowing me to come. The guild officials, thank you so much for choosing me and believing in me. And the congregation, thank you so much for coming to attend. This morning, we read from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 22. But please allow me to take you back a little bit and explain what Paul was talking about. Paul was writing to the church of Ephesus. The church of Ephesus had a challenge. It had a challenge of Jews not believing that Gentiles can accept the Lord. The Jews lived under the strict rule of the law. And the Gentiles were the freelancers of the land. They never took the law seriously. Actually, they never believed in the Jewish law. And the Jews had issues. They could not believe that the Gentiles could actually ac accept the Lord. They could not believe that the Gentiles could sit with them and become one body in Christ. So friends, I want us to, Paul was trying to explain to the church of Ephesus and telling them, hey, look here, we are all governed by one body. That is the body of Christ. But the Jews were saying, mm -mm, we don't think that is possible because Jews were raised to believe that Gentiles cannot at any one point accept the Lord and come to the congregation like them. They were raised to believe that Gentiles were pagans because why? They were not circumcised. And for them to come to, to at least be in a little agreement with the Jews, they needed to be circumcised. The Jews believed that Gentiles were alienated from Israel. The Jews believed that Gentiles were strangers of God's promises. The Jews believed that Gentiles can never be born again because they had idol worship. They worshipped gods. So Paul is trying to explain to the church of Ephesus and telling them, hey, look here. These Gentiles you see, they are also children of God so long as they accept the Lord. Believing Jews had it rough because Gentiles would never accept the law of the, of the Jews. But something happened in, in that confusion that they got half caste. These are the Samaritans. The half caste were j both Jew and Gentile. And in that confusion, the Samaritans accepted the Lord. So it is this group of Samaritans that went to the Gentiles and preached the gospel of Christ. While they preached the gospel of, the gospel of Christ, the, the Gentiles started accepting the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the challenge that the Jews had was uh, they, they could not understand how now they will embrace this other group that they despised so much. Yet, the law was telling them, if you are a Christian, you must treat both Jew and Gentile equally, so long as they are born again. That is the, 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 the challenge that Apostle Paul was trying to, to, to address. So this morning, friends, I want us to think through Ephesians 2.14 with that background. Because so many of the things that were being spoken about in the church of Ephesus 
other things that are happening today. So I want us to have that background. And please close your eyes and we pray together. Father in heaven, we want to honor you because you are a faithful God. We thank you, you are a God. We thank you because you are a God who never lets us down. You are a God who has loved us despite our terrible backgrounds. You are a God who has called us to you because you are the source of peace. We thank you for every member who is here. We thank you for those who are listening. We thank you for our families. And Father, this morning I surrender myself to you that, Lord, you will use me. Father, interpret every word to your children, Lord. Speak to me, speak to us, that at the end of the day, we will embrace you as the chief cornerstone. Praise the Lord. Our theme today is in Christ alone, our chief cornerstone. And this, this morning, the second reading was in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. You will allow me to go slow because there are several areas that I want us to think about and ponder about as, we, as I share with you. I'm going to read from verse 13, Ephesians chapter 2, 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you, you who were far off have been brought near by the blood of, of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Christ. He himself is our peace, who, made, who has made us both one and broken and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Friends, allow me to first stop there and share about peace. Verse, 14, verse from 13 to 14, we see Paul explaining and telling us that Christ is our source of peace. Hallelujah. He has not only been the source of peace, but he has made us one. He has broken down the wall of hostility. The Bible doesn't say that he has encouraged us to make peace. That is not what is in the Bible. The Bible doesn't say that Christ commands us to have peace with those we are struggling with, no. But the Bible says that Christ is our peace. I want to explain that further. He is the peace of all the struggles that we have. He is able to work peace because he is living inside us. Mothers and fathers, we relate to this example I'm going to give. When you have children, if you have four, three, if you have one, maybe you've not seen it, but if you have more than one children, there are situations when children are playing at home. And out of the game, they get disagreements and they start fighting. Mothers will quickly call, hey, Bridget, please stop fighting. I want you to make peace with your brother. Can you shake hands? How many of you have seen that? We quickly tell children, shake hands. Reverend, please come. We quickly tell them to shake hands. One, you don't know why they were fighting. But because I was in the kitchen and I had a fight, so I could, please shake hands. And this happens in so many Christian families. Shake hands and make peace. Now, Bridget will come to Lovinsa. I am not shaking hands because out of the peace that is coming from my heart, but I'm going to shake hands because mommy has said and in most cases, you find yourself, shake hands. Sometimes they refuse, but when you insist, they go. 
the outward sign of making peace will be done. But the heart will keep on compromising, will keep on complaining and complaining and complaining. Because why? The peace, the shaking of hands has not come from the heart. Are we together, friends? So the Bible is telling us that he is our peace. Meaning that before I move to go to Lovinsa, I need to have the peace of Jesus Christ in my heart. That I will go to Lovinsa and make peace properly. Hallelujah. In that if Lovinsa chooses not to make peace with me, it shall be well because the peace of God is in me. I went to Lovisa honestly. I went to has my sister, and I said, my sister, forgive me. Friend, there is no class, no a Zoom lesson, no lecturer, no mentor who will teach you how to have peace in your heart. But the Bible is very clearly telling us that Jesus Christ is our peace. There is even a very special blessing for the peacemakers. Praise the Lord. Matthew 5, 9 said, says, Blessed are the peacemakers. That is a great blessing. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the prince of peace. Peace. It also says in Philippians 4, 6, that he gives peace that surpasses our understanding. Hallelujah. There are situations, friends, that you'll see people going through when everybody else is expecting them to break down. You'll see them smiling and walking normally. And because the world is expecting you to break down, they begin wondering. Friends, this morning I want to bring this peace to, to introduce the peace of Christ. That no matter how turbulent the situation is, there is this peace that comes in our hearts if we have Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was telling people in the morning, the service in the morning, that as a young girl, I struggled a lot. I had so many questions about my family, where I was born. I had so many issues of unforgiveness. And when I came to UCU, I could not function well like any other students. Because why? I had questions. You see, parents, when we raise children and move on and die, there are so many mistakes that these children will inherit from you. There are so many questions they will have because they'll find my, themselves in a confused family setup. So when I came to university, a friend looked at me and said, but Bridget, I think you have a problem. I could not know, I didn't know that I have the problem. And she found a counselor. When I was talking to this counselor, I clearly realized that I had too much bitterness for my father. I, I did not understand why he would do, make certain choices, choices of polygamy. I could not understand why we are growing in such an environment of rejection. That when food is being served, yes, they will serve everybody, but just know there is special food for these other children. I did not understand that. I bless the counselor so much. She took me through forgiveness. And I remember she told me, Bridget, you need to invite the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. You need to forgive. 
because you are no longer enslaved by unforgiveness. You need to let go of your family. You need to stop judging. Are we together, friends? I remember that day when I confessed and I said, Lord, I am handing over this family to you. It actually became very clear to me that God has allowed, God is bringing me up to be a testimony in our family. Friends, today I truly thank God because I had to let that go. I truly thank God because the peace of God came into my life that day. I knew if somebody came to you and said, hey, I want to marry you, I knew they are lying. My head would quickly go, ha, ah, now this one will get a third and fourth and fifth and tenth wife. What is going to happen to me? But friends, on the other side, it is true that the Lord will get you a good husband who will change your story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many other times, you know, through this season of COVID, I have seen women are walking out of homes and leaving children. Kumanga, omwami takola. What am I going to eat? I want to visit. Oh, I want this. I want, what am I going to eat? But the man is clearly not working. But people choose to leave the homes and leave the children. We have had those scenarios. But each time I face them, I've clearly told this parent who stays that, you know what? You need to stay. Because unless you stay, the family uh, values are going to be broken. May the Lord minister to us that we will have peace in every circumstance. Hallelujah. Friends, it is also true that governments have signed so many treaties. America will sign treaties with Palestine and where and where. Uganda, we have signed so many treaties. And after the signing, the, the, the journalists will take pictures showing the signatures. But I've clearly understood that even the signing, it is an outside sign. The world today needs Christ. Because the Bible clearly says that he will embrace all of us. Jew, Gentile, Muslim, uh, Catholic, all of us, we can be one if we choose to embrace Jesus Christ. Palestines are, are, are descendants of Ishmael. We know that. Israelites are descendants of Abraham. We know that. And these two, two people have been fighting all along. So in the morning, I was like, but God sincerely, what is it that will bring us together? It is not Ishmael. It's not Abraham, but it is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Unless these countries look at this central power, Jesus Christ. We are praying for Jerusalem, friends. Jerusalem is being affected by the Ishmael and Abraham issues. And it will take them to embrace Christ. It will take us to stand as a church. And we all embrace Christ. And we embrace our brothers that peace will prevail. Hallelujah. Verse 15 says, the wall of hostility is broken down in Christ. When we are in Christ, we are one in Christ. There is no, there is no Gentile, there is no Muslim, because we are one in Christ. 16 says, the cross is the only way we can come to the, to, to, to the Lord. Paul is telling them that the wall of hostility has been broken. What will break the, whole of the wall of hostility in our lives is not the money we have. It's not the PhDs that we have. It's not the philosophy that we have. It's not the, the brain I have, a first class me, I know this cannot affect me. It will. 
But the Bible is telling us that the wall of hostility has been broken down. Because why? People, those who will follow the one way to heaven, the way of the cross, will surely have no problems with the wall of hostility. Because why? We have one uniting factor, and that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The wall of hostility will be broken if we kneel down and plead to the Lord and say, God, forgive me. I have segregated Bridget. God, forgive me. The wall of hostility will be broken through repentance. The wall of hostility will be broken if you and me will embrace Christ as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. The wall of hostility will be destroyed, not by the money you have, not by the superiority, but by embracing the cross. Hallelujah. Romans 3, 20, 23 says that we are not saved by our works. It's not the many people you helped. It's not the charity organizations you've led. It's not the poor that you fed, that is work. But it is about your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 19 reminds us that we are no longer known by our tribe, culture, wealth, but we are known. We are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Many times, I have received people in office with issues. They have wrangles, right? And when they come, you ask them now, what is your problem with so-and-so? And this person looks at you in the eyes and says, you know what, my blood and this one's blood doesn't mix. If they want to emphasize it, they will say it in Luganda. I pray that I will say it very well in Luganda. I have seen students who say, I hate this person. So I cannot stay in the room they're in. Madam, please change me. And I'm like, what is the problem? I, I just hate them. Why do you, why do you just, <laughs> and you are of just, friends, I want to remind you something. This person you don't quag at, this person you cannot be with, is walking on the same campus as yours. This person is going to the dining and students. This person you are running away from the room is the same person who will use, you'll actually use the plate they used yesterday. You will actually attend the same Zoom classes. You will actually serve on the same table. But you're saying your blood does not mix with them. This morning, Paul is reminding us that in Christ, the wall of hostility will be broken down. We are... Let me read from verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Hallelujah. After embracing the cross, we need to know that there is nothing we can do without the cornerstone. The cornerstone, I want to give you a definition of a cornerstone. An important quality of future on a particular thing depends or is best. It's an important part. It is an important brick. 
It is an important something that will hold the house together. Are we together, friends? And the Bible tells us that when we are in Christ, Christ lives in us. And when we confess Christ as our Lord and Savior, it means he is the chief cornerstone. For us to thrive in life, for us to build these houses, these bodies very well, you need the cornerstone. But if you put the cornerstone aside, I've heard people say, Kati, njagala I first handle this, then I'll come back to. But the Bible is telling us that in all that we do, the way we live, whatever we do, the where we are, we need the cornerstone. When you put the cornerstone aside, imagine you have your house and it doesn't have a clear foundation. When it rains, you will be among the people who will move out because the house is crumbling any time. When there is wind, you will be blown by the wind because why? You have no chief cornerstone in your life. But friends, this morning, I want to encourage all of us to embrace the stone that was rejected. The stone that the builders rejected. The Gentiles rejected the stone. But as time went on, they embraced the stone. In Uganda today, there are so many things that are happening, and you're like, but God, where are you? Things are happening. Friends, it is not okay for you to surrender your child to be taken in a certain house, to be taught how to raise a dog. And they take your child, they close them in the house, and you're like, it is okay, it is the newest trend. You don't know what these children are being taught. It is not okay to allow certain literature to freely move in the children's libraries. It's not okay. Friends, it is not okay. You see, online learning has come. And this is exposing even the young ones to these gadgets. Friends, on these gadgets, our children are very, very clever. That they will know how to operate a laptop more than you who used it over 30 years. It is on these gadgets that they will truly go and log on pornography. It is on these DSTV channels that we pay for them, that we let them sit and watch up to midday. I don't have time, I'm very busy. Da, 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 da. Yet, there are some cartoons that are coming in and these cartoons are orienting them. It is not okay. Friends, it is not okay for us to say it is well for a cow to mount a cow. It is not okay. It is not okay for us to say my body is trapped in a female frame, but I'm actually a man. It is not okay. It is not okay for us parents to say it is, it is their choice. You know, we are in a world of choice. Certain things we have to put our feet down and say, these are the family values and we need to stand by them. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to encourage all of us to think through what I'm going to say to you. As believers, we have free access to the Lord. You do not need a prophet or a who. The people, people are making very good money these days. If you want to reach near God, go to pastor, apostle, who, pay 50,000. Now I think some, some no longer pay 50. Pay 200,000, you'll see the man of God. The man of God is going to offer you a special prayer. And when the man of God touches you, you are going to be healed. As if there is a wall between me and God. It's like 
I cannot reach God. For me to reach God, I have to go through the man of God. But the Bible is clearly telling us that the wall that separated us from our father was broken down. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us to know that we have free access. We are no longer strangers, but citizens with a sense. Hallelujah. As the believers, may the Lord help us that even when I sit in that office, I will be reminded every day that I do not belong there. I do not belong in that office. But the Lord has given us a chance, friends. It is, a ch ah, it is permission from God. The Lord has allowed you to sit in that office for such a time as this. The Lord has allowed Bridget to sit there because God knew in UCU I'll find students who have issues with families. Hello. The Lord has put you in that office where you are as a steward. You are working on behalf of a higher power. Now there is a problem there. There are some offices. I'm not saying you see you all over. Where they will ask you which tribe are you. You will not be helped unless your name has some Rutoro dialect. You will not be helped because I feel uh, this student made a comment and this comment came up in a tabloid. And because it came up in a tabloid, I will not help this person. But God has called us in these offices. God has called you to that business because he wants you to help. Jew, Gentile, black, white, rich, poor. We are all one in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am looking forward to a time where we will stop asking certain things. I pray so much that we'll reach a point where you will intervene or you will stand with somebody and they ask you, where is this person coming from? And you're like, I don't know. Me, I'm just helping a, 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 a believer. Friends, we can, you will never know that you love until you love a stranger. You will never know the price of love until it hurts. Friends, when you love your relative, praise the Lord. But I want you to love somebody from wherever, from Karamoja. You love them and love them and, until you feel, this is too much, but I will love you anyway because it is you who are said. Friend, love is not love until when it hurts and you are ready to love again and again. Praise the Lord. As the body of Christ, we are built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. Apostles and prophets who allowed Jesus Christ to work through them as the chief cornerstone? I want to ask you a few questions. Could you be there and you still have a wall in your life? Human nature is quite interesting. We build walls. But friends, I want to tell you, it is very expensive to maintain a wall. If you meet this person wherever, you start putting a face to, to communicate that don't come near me. Atomic bomb if you come near me. When this person is in the congregation and is speaking, you're like, I will not show anything. Because me and this person, our blood does not. Could you be there and you have a wall? Are there things, friends, that are taking away your peace? There is nothing beautiful like having inner peace. 
It is beautiful, friends, for us to wake up every day and say, Lord, I thank you. The world is so stormy around me, but I want to have peace because I know it is you who called me to do this. Hallelujah. We have a very interesting community. I don't know, I don't know why, but maybe that's how it is. People easily take wrong information very fast. I think that is human nature. Wrong information will fly like feathers in the wind. And by the time the right information comes, if you are not having the peace of Jesus Christ, you will be broken. But I pray that the Lord will help us reach that point, that even when everything around you is turbulent, you will choose to have peace. Hallelujah. Let me ask you, what can you do about something that you know you can change? What can you do? It is within your power and you can change it. What can you do? Please tell me. I don't want to pick. When something is within your means and you know you can't change it, you do change it. But when something is beyond you, you, you don't even know where to start from, what can you do about it? You let it be and focus on the ultimate goal. Hallelujah. I want to encourage all of you that no matter what pain it is that we have gone through, I want to invite you to this Christ that gave me peace. I want to encourage you to come to the cross because it is only at the cross that we will find peace. I want to minister to the women. You know, we have women because we are emotional. We carry so much on our head. And, you know, even the walking will change, even the face will change, if everything about you will change because you're carrying a load from the first year you got married, now you are 20 years in marriage, but you are carrying it all here. And my question is, for how long are we going to carry that? Husbands, for how long? Are you going to cut? Oh, no, Moana and Jakumusasula. I have seen students at UCU who come to school and the parents are saying, I don't know this child. This child is not mine because why? There is an implication of the parent paying tuition. So they are saying, for me to be safe, I want to deny that I'm the father of this child. And I have reminded those parents every day and told them, you know what? You will need them. Because the you see, I know, the Lord is going to cause somebody to rise on behalf of your child. And I bless the Lord for this community. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage all of us to know that there is nothing that is too hard for God. Friends, up to today, I keep on asking God, God, I wish I knew this woman who paid my fees. I was a struggling student. But somebody from the U.S., friends, I don't know this person and it still hurts. Because I really wanted this person to see where I am today. This person paid my fees, not because they knew me, but because God has, uh, had asked them to give something to a needed child in UCU. Friends, I want to encourage all of you to know that there is nothing that is impossible in the sight of God. I want to encourage you to know that when we are in Christ, all our answers are in Christ. I want you to know 
count it. You know, when they say count it all joy, you're like, but what, what joy should I count in struggling? Friends, the, now I understand it. I thank God for my struggles because if I had not struggled, you wouldn't see a Bridget here today. All challenges come to teach us something. Look at that struggle you're going through and ask yourself, God, what do you want me to learn from this? It doesn't matter how painful it is. If daddy has rejected you, you student, I want you to look at that and say, God, daddy has rejected me, but caused me to stand and be the best father for the next generation. Hallelujah. If you have no parents, the Bible tells us that he's the father of the fatherless. If you have struggled here and you have been rejected, I want to tell you that Uganda Christian University has a community of believers who will love you, who will take care of you, who will understand you. And before you graduate, you'll say, thank you, Lord. It has been you from day one. Let me invite you to the cornerstone. The stone that many reject. The stone that professors have embraced. The stone that has all the power. I want to invite you to embrace it. You don't know why you came today to hear Bridget say these words. But I want you to know that the Lord has brought you to Thorncroft Chapel Chiagwe today for such a message as this. Hallelujah. I want to invite the choir to come and help me sing. We are going to sing about this rock of ages. I want us to sing about the rock of ages. One of the verses says, nothing in my hands I bring. God is not looking for your wisdom. God is not looking for the books. God is not looking for Dosa. But God is looking for Bridget Mugume to go to him with nothing but with my heart. That is what God is looking for. I want to encourage, to request you to all stand up. Just surrender to the rock of ages. Just embrace that peace that Jesus gives. Rock of ages. congregation and you are faced with the challenges I've talked about, the challenges that Paul shared about. 
I just want you to put up your hand and we pray together in agreement. It's not about what I started, but I'm simply coming to the cross to surrender to you. Just raise your hand in faith and say, Lord, this is what I'm struggling with. in heaven we come to you this morning Lord nothing we are not coming with anything but our pain Lord we are coming because we know you are the chief cornerstone Lord we are coming to you because we know that in you there is peace Lord, we are coming to you this, uh, this morning because we know you are the Prince of Peace. Father, minister to us. Minister to every individual in this congregation. Lord, minister to the very special gifts of students that you brought at Uganda Christian University. Lord, minister to the students. Lord, minister to the staff, those whose pain, Lord, cannot be talked about. Lord, minister to the millions who have lost jobs because of the COVID. Father, I pray that you alone, my God, will make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, minister to us, leaders, oh God, that we will lead knowing that you've called us for such a time as this. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for taking care of us. Thank you so much for accepting us to come to you. Thank you for giving us a free ticket to reach you, oh God, each time we are struggling. Father, I pray that as we go home, you'll bless us today. In Jesus' name I pray.